This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. The 2018 midterm election saw historic wins for Native American women. Maybe it's a year for Native women <laughs> because there's a lot of us running across the country. That's what Deb Holland from Laguna Pueblo had to say after her June Democratic primary win for New Mexico's first congressional district. Holland was referring to Native women candidates running for local, state, and national offices across the country. She went on to victory in November and during her first week of orientation in Washington. Holland told us she's already forging relationships across the aisle in Congress. It's all about support, right? It's all about um, joining together you know, getting your allies together. There's a, there, we have the largest um, group of women of color in this Congress. And I feel very strongly that we're all going to stick together on so many issues. The incoming freshman class also includes Sharice Davids of Kansas, who's Ho-Chunk. Here's Davids and her November acceptance speech. From the beginning, this campaign has been built on bringing new leaders to the table and new voices to the table. And I am so honored to stand here today knowing that I will fill that role for our community here in January. Davids and Holland made history becoming the first Native American women in Congress. And in Minnesota, after her historic win, Peggy Flanagan from the White Earth Nation talked about being a top advisor in her new role as lieutenant governor. And as we work to put together an administration. Uh, We think that that'll also um, reflect the kind of campaign that that we ran, where the people who are directly affected by policies and decisions will have a a seat at the table. So um, I'm excited to take this next step with my partner. We say partners in justice, uh, Tim Walls, to, to govern the state together. The women have pledged to work on a number of Native American issues. And now look back at our 2018 series, State of Change. In this story, a tribal consortium in New Mexico addresses the digital divide by building their own infrastructure. Construction workers lay cables underground near a road in Sandoval County on a warm February day in New Mexico. The fiber optic network, which runs about 60 miles, will bring high-speed internet to four tribal libraries, Cochiti, San Felipe, Santa Ana, and Santa Domingo. The tribes partnered to obtain a federal E-rate subsidy of nearly $4 million for the project. The library at Santa Domingo Pueblo, located off Interstate 25 between Santa Fe and Albuquerque, opened in the 1960s and has evolved to serve tribal citizens and their neighbors in nearby towns. We're out of the way as far as connectivity, and this is the only place that they can access Internet. Cynthia Aguilar is the librarian at Santa Domingo Pueblo. Her community, like other rural tribes across the country, uses the library as the main place to connect to the web for education and other opportunities. People also use their personal cell phones with data plans, but the connection is spotty. That's a similar story at Cochiti Pueblo. Cochiti's library uses a telecommunications provider for internet service, but it's costly. Students in the after-school program often feel the impacts. Library staff prioritize internet use, says Education Director Kevin Lewis. Well, we have to pick and choose who gets internet for the day. Lewis says when the broadband project is complete, the bill will be a couple hundred dollars and the savings can be put back into library resources. Tribal leaders are currently working with U.S. lawmakers to ensure tribes are included in national infrastructure plans. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced at the Annenberg National Native Voice Studios by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation. Funding is by Odawi Law Group, provider of Indian Law Solutions, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, with support from the Public Radio Satellite System. Support for journalism that raises the awareness of child well-being to citizens and to policymakers provided by the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Building a brighter future for children, families, and communities. Information at aecf.org. Support for law and justice-related programming provided by Hobbs, Strauss, Dean, and Walker, LLP, a national law firm dedicated to promoting and defending tribal rights for more than 30 years. More information available at HobbsStrauss.com. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.